Let me say again how much I appreciate you being here at our quarterly business meeting tonight. I realize we're not engaged in making momentous decisions as a congregation. We already have Dave Steele in place in our associate pastor position. We've got Aaron Thompson in place as our youth pastor. We're not making building program decisions or budget decisions. But that doesn't mean we're not about important business tonight. You remember it was not long ago that we reworked our mission statement to the point where we want to be disciples who disciple. And tonight we're going to talk. The staff are going to come together and talk with you about what that means, not only in their own personal lives, but in their ministry as a whole. For me personally, what I saw is a couple of things that God was doing this past summer at our family reunion just last month. We had one of my nieces who has been, let's say, uncomfortable with her extended family. She recently got married, wasn't sure whether she would be well accepted, whether her husband be well accepted. But just last month, she and her husband came and we were able to play games together. We were able to celebrate his birthday. We went to a Pittsburgh Pirates Chicago Cubs baseball game and we made good headway in building a relationship with those two. And for that, I'm very, very thankful and I look forward to what God's going to do in the years to come. In my own neighborhood, you know, I've been praying for my neighbors. And you know what turned things around? That storm back on July 1st. Because everybody in the neighborhood went out to help each other clean up. And I got to work with these men. And I've already had one golf outing with one. And when the two different men get back from vacation at the end of this month, we're going to go out again. God's opening some doors in terms of me building relationships with these individuals and their wives. And I'm looking forward to being a disciple who can disciple. You know, I feel so privileged to be part of a Doctor of Ministry program in discipleship. So for the last three years, I've been taking trips out to California every June for a couple of weeks of intensive courses and in between studying and reading like crazy and learning just a ton about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is using that whole experience to teach me a lot and disciple me in a lot of ways. But on a more personal note, I've been reading lately in uh, the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, I landed recently in uh, Matthew 23, the passage where Jesus uh, speaks to his disciples and the crowds about the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Here were a bunch of guys, uh, the Pharisees and teachers of the law, who knew the scriptures and were teaching it. And Jesus said, you need to listen to those guys and obey everything they're saying in as much as they're teaching the scriptures. But he went on to say, but don't do what they do. They don't practice what they preach. And so it reminded me that it's very possible to know a lot about the scriptures, even teach the scriptures, uh, but not do what they say. And so Jesus has discipled me lately by teaching me uh, to be sure before him that I'm practicing the things that he's teaching me. I feel like Jesus has been discipling me in a few ways this summer. And first, in my personal devotions, I've been reading through some of Paul's letters to pastors, the, what we call the pastoral epistles, uh, working my way through the Timothys and preparing for Titus. And it's been really refreshing, as well as challenging, to kind of step back from the details of planning events and lesson plans and all of that, and really to look again at what it means to be a pastor and what it means to minister. And um, I really feel like Jesus has been working through that and God's been using his word to disciple me this summer. God's also definitely been at work in my family. Um, it's been awesome to be here now a little over six months in Wheaton and participating with FBC. And so many people have been around to love on and encourage us with uh, Julian, our son, or Peanut as the students call him. And God's definitely been at work uh, in Ann and I as we have participated here at the church, we've been so blessed by the teaching from Pastor Mike and the worship and fellowship, and it's been really strengthening for us in our practice of faith in the home. Our conversations about what God is doing in our lives and our Bible studies together, our prayer life together, it's just been really a blessing to be here and be a part of this congregation. Finally, this summer uh, has been really great. We've been able to focus in, in student ministry on just two really specific goals for students. 
One being that they deepen their friendship and relationship with each other, just focusing on relationships. And the other being service. And in the course of doing that, I've been able to get to know the students and parents and leaders so much better than I had previously. And as, as is always the case in Christian community, that process of getting to know other followers of Jesus and exploring His Word together and just discovering what God is doing in each of their lives. It was very deepening and enriching for me, not only in what it means to be a pastor, but just in what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And so this wonderful relational time this summer has definitely been something that Jesus has used to disciple me. So a couple weeks ago, um, packed up the family and headed out with the pop-up to go camping. Um, we did mix in some educational pieces to it, um, but one day we decided that we were just going to hang out at the campground um, and relax. And that's pretty much what we did. And about halfway through the afternoon, um, we got a visitor. A little girl came by and asked if we had any kids. And of course we did. And so she was about Carson's age. So he went out and they started playing together. And we pretty much spent the whole afternoon with her. Um, we found out her name was Jenny and she was seven years old and her family were seasonal campers there, which means they um, are there pretty much every weekend or close to that. Um, and I asked her, so what do you like to do here um, on the weekends? And she said, well, my dad likes to sleep and my mom is a babysitter. So, and I said, oh, okay. And they had this really nice pool there. And I said, well, do you ever go on swimming in the pool? And she said, well, I've been in the pool once. And I was like, hmm, wow. Um, it was just really um, a little bit of an eye-opener um, to just see this little girl who obviously um, was seeking a little bit of attention. Um, and, you know, I may never see her again, but it was great to be able to spend the afternoon with her and for her and Carson to play together, um, just kind of showing a little bit of the love of Jesus to her and you know like I said we may never see her again but we can continue to pray for her and hopefully um, you know she will one day uh, know Jesus. How has God been discipling me this summer? Well he's taught me a lot and I've been trying to listen to him and one of the main ways that he's taught me this summer is through our opportunity to go to Colorado with our family this summer. Whenever I'm there I see the absolute grandeur and beauty and powerfulness of the mountains and it's just so amazing that God, it just shows me that God is so creative and so amazingly powerful. As you're on the top of a mountain you look out miles and miles and miles at peak after peak and you see snow, lakes, trees, rocky cliffs, smooth cliffs, just amazing his power and creativity and just the awesomeness of that part of the country. Um, through that it helps me to, real, to remember the verse in Ephesians 3.20 where we hear, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we could ever ask or think. And we couldn't even imagine creating something like that. And yet, he, he does, and he also cares about the intimate details of our lives and is able to care for those. So I'm thankful to him that he can care for the details of my life, the details of those that I love, and the details um, associated with Toddler's Campus. And I'm thankful to, to know that I have a relationship with him and, and that he can control all those things that I can't always control. The other area I'm excited about has to do with ministry here at First Baptist. That the whole discipleship process to me just gets my motor going. And one of the things that I've been working on along with Dave Steele is the teaching preaching series this fall relative to what it means to be a disciple. Come the end of August we're going to finish our study in the book of Matthew and then move on to looking at our mission statement and assessing what does that really mean and then taking discipleship, being discipled. What does that mean to be a disciple? We assume we know but we're going to open that up in a fuller and richer way not only from the pulpit but in our ABFs and in our small groups. So I'm really excited 
about teaching more in depth and seeing us grow in terms of being disciples who disciple. The other thing that I love about ministry here at First Baptist is one of the things that was placed upon me as an expectation when I came 10 years ago was my engaging with what we affectionately refer to as our field staff. We call them missionaries, but they're really staff that are out on the field from First Baptist. A couple years ago, you remember, I went to West Africa and worked with the missionaries there. Well, this time, what I want to do is visit some of our stateside staff, the Buglers in Albany, Francois Picard up in Quebec, the Trons in Connecticut. So in October, I'm going to point my car eastward and stop and visit and encourage and assist and help disciple those who are our field staff. I look forward to that very much. You know, one of the things that I'm really excited about right now is building on our orientation to discipleship a campaign that we had last January, February. If you were here, you know we had about 300 people go through this uh, campaign together with us in small groups where we learned more clearly what it means to follow Jesus. And a lot of great things came out of that campaign and we got a little bit clearer on what that means. And uh, so we want to build on that. And, and one of the things that we're going to do for those who weren't here and couldn't participate then is I'm going to be launching another six-week small group in September for those who want to get in on this material. Also in January or thereabouts, we plan to launch uh, a, an in-depth small group curriculum where we bore into the marks of a discipled person. And we're going to get uh, much deeper than we have in the past in that. So I'm excited about that because all of this helps us to build on what it means to follow Christ, getting clear about that, which then paves the way for uh, greater obedience to Jesus. And Jesus said that our obedience to Him leads to joy. And so I'm looking forward to a, a lot of uh, joyful people around First Baptist as a result. Another area that I'm really excited about is leadership training. We've been pouring a lot more energy into this lately. One of the things that we're doing, or one of the things that I'm doing, is meeting regularly with uh, Aaron Thompson, our youth pastor, and Lori Atkins, our children's ministry director, just to coordinate uh, our disciple-making efforts and to sharpen one another. And we haven't done that much in the past. And so we're seeing some good fruit coming out of that as well. And uh, we're offering uh, leadership development courses on Sunday mornings for uh, small group leaders, ABF leaders and teachers, ministry leaders, emerging leaders of, of all kinds, courses like uh, the spiritual life of a leader, uh, small group prayer ideas, uh, interactive teaching methods, and, and courses like this that are just designed to kind of sharpen us. All of this, of course, uh, means more equipped leaders, and equipped leaders means multiplying our, our disciple-making efforts. And that will, of course, spill over into our families and those that we love, and uh, greater progress and fruit in achieving the mission that Christ Jesus has called us to. So I'm very excited about what is happening in disciple-making around here lately. I'm really excited about a couple of things for our fall season of ministry. Uh, first, we have our college students returning, as well as our normal youth staff here from the church getting ready. Uh, for training and kind of recalibrating here in August to prepare for the new school year. And uh, we're really excited to continue our relational emphasis with so many adults coming into the students' lives to help to bless them as well as point them to Jesus. And we also have a, a, a teaching plan prepared that both students and adults have weighed in on and helped to craft that will take us through the entirety of the Old Testament this year as well as a number of topics that relate to students' lives in the real world and what Jesus has to say about things that they face. We also have experiences that we have planned, events and activities that will not only be opportunities for fun and fellowship and perhaps outreach, but also chances for students to explore key themes like community and social justice, as well as a variety of other topics that relate to what we'll be exploring in God's Word. One of the things that we're really excited about is coming up in September. That's an activity, one of these experiences, that's going to point us toward community as well as discipleship. We call it D-NOW, which stands for Discipleship Now Weekend, where students will be staying in homes around the community of Wheaton. They'll be staying in small groups where they'll explore God's Word together with their small group leader. 
They'll also gather for service, for worship, for teaching in large group formats. And the whole weekend will point at a single theme of Scripture's challenge to the students to be imitators of God, to really wrestle with what it means to follow Jesus in every area of life. And it's our hope that this will prepare us to start the school year with a serious emphasis on discipleship. We're really excited about it and excited to see what God will do through our D-NOW experience. So I'm excited about going orange. And what I mean by that is a new curriculum that we have started in children's ministry. Um, and it's actually more than a curriculum. It's really a strategy. Um, and it gives us a really great foundation um, for spiritual formation from infant all the way up through senior high school. Uh, we kicked it off this summer with an amazing week of VBS um, called Zapped. And you know, 150 of us in the gym each night worshiping and learning about how Peter had plugged into the power of God and the amazing things that he was able to do. Um, and it was just a great week. Um, but you also often wonder, um, are you really ha making an impact? Are kids really going to remember this? And so I was really encouraged when a few weeks ago I heard from a family who brought a little boy to VBS. And this little boy actually comes from a home that the parents don't go to church. He has no background at all. And um, he, they were sitting down together having lunch. And they prayed, and then the mom asked, hey, what's everybody thankful for? And they went around the table, and when it came to him, he said, I'm thankful that God gives me everything I need to lead a godly life. And the mom was like, whoa, where did that come from? Well, I knew exactly where that came from because that was our bottom line that we were really reinforcing each night during VBS. And this little boy got it, and he remembered it. And that was just so exciting when kids start to get it and see the light bulb go on. Um, so. We're really excited. We um, continued using the curriculum in both preschool and elementary this summer, and we'll continue this fall. It's a great plan where there's time for kids to um, meet together in a small group where they're connected to one leader and get to know them in a group of kids where they can feel safe to ask questions and begin to really dig deeper into what it means to have faith um, in God. And then also, We've got a great large group piece of it where we're doing, you know, fun worship for kids and there's great storytelling that'll just bring these Bible stories alive for them. So we are really excited about it and here's a little peek into a little bit more about what Orange is all about. As the director of Toddler's Campus, I have the privilege of working with our staff and um, many children from around the community and their families. And I am so thankful for it because uh, 35 weeks a year, these children and their parents come into our building anywhere from two to five days a week. And we just love having them and they're welcomed with uh, open arms from our staff. And um, we have about 170 students enrolled for this next year. Seven of them are from First Baptist, and the other children are, come from over 50 different churches. Uh, I have them put that on their applications, so I keep track of that. And 26 of the children did not put a church, so we assume that those children are unchurched families. So what a privilege we have of teaching these children and their families about um, the Lord. 
One of the newest um, things I'm excited about as we disciple these children and families is that we've opened up spots for Wheaton Square apartment children uh, to come to Toddler's Campus. We started this last year and we had eight and then one joined, so nine children last year from Wheaton Square Apartments. This year we have 10 enrolled and that is uh, really our maximum number that we kind of set as um, letting them come. So we're very excited about that. They're in both the three and four year old classes. They do come at a very reduced tuition rate, which we're happy to give them, something that they can afford and yet they're still paying a little something um, for their children's education and they're so appreciative. Um, this will really help them to learn English. They all come into our school with no or very little English and they also can learn what it's like to be in an American school so that when they begin kindergarten they will be prepared with some English and what it's like to be in school and they'll have we feel that they will be a lot more successful just off the bat as they enter elementary school. So we're thankful for this privilege. We're thankful that they're right next door. No transportation worries. They can walk over. And uh, we did start a scholarship fund this summer to help uh, fund them, um, as it does have an impact on our budget to have 10 children that aren't paying much at all. But the VBS kids this summer raised over $600 to start that scholarship fund, which we're so thankful for and we hope that others might be willing to contribute to that scholarship fund as well to help these kids um, and help us love them and teach them about the Lord and prepare them for school ahead. So we thank First Baptist Church and I thank the Lord for uh, using this ministry to disciple children and families in our community and um, we just hope that you will be on board with us as well. Thank you. So lest I get Redundant, let me remind all of us what we agreed upon some months ago, that our mission is to glorify God by being disciples of Jesus Christ who disciple others. You and I bring glory to our God by being disciples who disciple. We keep passing it on so that the kingdom of God will advance.